Paul, what's up? Great to have you on, dude. And wanted to get your thoughts on not just Bobby Miller versus Zach McKinstry, but more about hitting a batter twice, him saying, what the hell? Pitcher going, it's not on purpose. But does the hitter have a point going, I don't want to get hit twice. I don't give a shit. It's the big leagues. Yeah, I mean, Zach has a point that, you know, no one wants to get, you know, especially up in this area, 100 miles an hour, like Bobby's throwing. That's, you know, that's that's scary. It's a little risky. It just is, you know, one time they, you think you can slip, and second time you're like, all right, like you you got to start throwing some strikes. But um, so I, I, I don't blame him for being upset. I wouldn't want to be hit by 99, 100 either. That's why I'm a pitcher and I don't get anywhere near the strike zone now. So, uh, but like I have the same, you know, I have the same thing. Bobby's trying to throw the ball up in the zone. I'm trying to throw the ball up in the zone some days you don't really have great command of it and, and it can slip and you get two guys in one day. It's just, you know, it's unfortunate. It's just, as, uh, but I, I appreciate that he said, you know, it's not on purpose. Like I'm not trying to hit people. Locaine had a great point. It's like, uh, you know, you need to make sure you tell me if, if you're going to hit me twice, like, are you, are you guys trying to send a statement or what's going on? You just tell them like, Hey, it's, you know, it's not on purpose. Like, you know, just take it first and, and, and I'll see if I can lock it back in. Does it change your approach then? Because I always felt like I had a catching coach that told me, Hey, if there's warnings out, the very first pitch you got to call is a fastball inside to the next batter, or else pitchers are going to be like, ah, I don't want to throw it there because you got to get McKinstry. Obviously, they're trying to go up and in, and he threw something a little too far. Does it make you nervous and maybe like, oh, I don't want to hit him if the dude you know calls you out? I, I mean, you can't go that way because you know if I start throwing the ball down in the zone, that's you know that's how I get ripped, and I'm back in the bases or I need a new baseball. So um, warnings, no warnings, like. You know, I'm still trying to make my pitches. If I have to go in, I have to go in. If I have to go up and it might be in, I have to go up and in. That's just one of those things. And, um, you know, you just have to, you, you have to do what you have to do. And, you know, maybe just a little extra focus and making sure this one doesn't slip and make sure I get it to my exactly where I want to. Um, but no, you can't, you can't just, can't just be scared and only throw outside or only throw down away or only throw breaking balls. That's, you know, that's a recipe for disaster. Hey, Paul, you guys are in Yankee stadium, right? And you're, you got the Wi-Fi working in Yankee Stadium. Got the Wi-Fi working in the in the concrete jungle here. Okay, what's what's the thing you're gonna get on the spread? Because people that don't know out there, mm. there's oh. everything you can possibly eat in that clubhouse, like for every type of food, everything. So, what's your go-to when you go to Yankee Stadium? So, when everyone's a kid, they think of the major leagues like, oh, they must have this for food. They must have they must have a full wall of candy. They must have this, this, this. And then you get to the big leagues, and you're like, ah, oh, it's not really like that unless you're at Yankee stadium and it really is like that. Um, Doug makes everything perfect over here. Uh, my favorite thing that they have here, they have like these lamp, like mini lamb chops that are just out of this world. They're like lamb lollipops They're that, That's the best thing they put out there. That's, that's, I think it's day two. They usually do it. That's so I'll, uh, I'll come, I'll come to the field pretty hungry tomorrow. Mm, delicious. Better yes, than the lobster, better than the lobster roll that they make there fresh for you. Oh, I don't think we've. I mean, we've had we've had a couple of lobster rolls, and I'm a, I'm a huge lobster roll vibe. But the the lamb chops are just they're out of this world. And we asked them a couple of years ago. We're like, all right, if this is what you give the visiting team, like, what do you guys get on the main on the home side? And he said it's pretty much the same thing. Only you know you get a little extra creativity and a little extra special over there. But pretty much they get the same spreads as us. So um, we used to joke. It's like this is what they're giving the team they're trying to beat. They're giving the best food ever to the team they're trying to beat. Um, yeah, this is a uh, this is the this is the weekend that you you know you come to the field hungry. Also, imagine if you're on the Yanks and you've never been on another team and you start hitting the road and you're like, "Excuse me, where are my lamb chop lollipops? <laughs> where are the lobster rolls in this Oakland A's clubhouse or you know wherever? Whoever has shitty food, like, excuse yeah. me, what yeah. is this? That's a tough. That's tough if you get used to Yankee Stadium food. You go somewhere that uh, they don't spend nearly as much money, and you're like, you get, "Man, this is this is a downgrade." <laughs> you go from New York to Oakland, and Mikey's walking around in Oakland, going, "You want a smoothie? Hey, you guys want a smoothie? Smoothies <laughs> or some chili or some hey, chili in San Francisco? Or the round table don't pizza? He's Mike. always, Mikey's always got the round table pizza and the fried chicken. It's the best. Man, Mikey's doing the best. That's so can, spot on. Oh man, that's spot on. <laughs> you know he did. He has made some upgrades. Did he? He didn't used to have the uh, – did he have the taco trucks and the chicken truck, like the food trucks that come when you guys no. were there or no? Cause that's, no. Okay, so now now when you get there, there's like a taco truck guy. Uh, there's like a barbecue chicken truck guy. So as soon as you get there, that's your spread. But it's it's fire. Mikey's doing the best he can with what he's got. And yeah. smoothies. No, smoothies. He loves the smoothies. And smoothies. <laughs> they like bring him like uh, like 
a bunch of coins in a sack and dump it down and they go, your budget for the month. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. All right. Good. Mikey's the real MVP then. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. That's not easy to do to work with those resources. Okay. So Paul, I want to show you a tweet. We just brought this up to Ken Rosenthal and you'll be able to clap back to this. You'll like this. So Tim Healy, who's been on the show. Good dude. Does a great job. You know, put a take out there. He goes, I've watched enough of the Marlins, D-backs, and Reds lately to confidently say we were all right about the expanded playoffs being too expanded. Three wild card spots is too many. And in addition to me just straight up disagreeing, nothing to do with you being a friend of the show, your thoughts on what you're experiencing right now and if they took away a third wild card from this race. Yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm disappointed in Tim's reaction to to that. That's that's disappointing. I don't, you know, I thought that the playoff series last year were very were very good. The four five, even the three six. Um, if you recall, as a six team made it to the World Series, so I think that that's a statement in itself. And then uh, the Rays Guardian series last year was was extremely tight, and um, so I, you know, I think that's. I'm disappointed. Now we didn't play very well in New York last week. So maybe that's why he thinks that, you know, as the third wildcard team, maybe we didn't deserve to make the playoffs, but um, then we went five straight. So, you know, anyone can have a bad series and you just happen to watch one of our worst series in the second half. And so I think that's, I think that's a little short-sighted and, and I, I liked him. He, you know, he's good, but I think, I think that's a little disappointing. I, would he say the same thing about the American league where we have teams that are possibly going to win 90 games, who's not going to make the postseason? So, you know, that seems a little, that seems a little rash saying that we, that we didn't need an extra playoff team. So Spot on. are the diamondbacks built to win in the, in the world series, win the world series, make it to the playoffs. Cause everyone says, well, they don't have a chance because they don't hit enough home runs. Are the diamondbacks built to win the world series? All you got to do is get in. All you got to do is get in and you never know. Now, I think we're even more built for the postseason than most teams because we have two absolute horses at the top of the at the top of the rotation. And when you're only throwing four, when you're only throwing four starters, maybe even three if they go in short rest, and you have two of the best in the National League, I think that gives us a pretty good chance just about every night in the postseason to, to win it. And um, you know, yeah, we don't hit home, we don't hit homers like a lot of the teams in the league, but nobody runs the bases like we do. Corbin Carroll is an absolute monster that can't be stopped when he's on the bases. Um, and everybody starts to follow suit. And, and next thing you know, we just create chaos and, and uh, you know, put a little pressure on teams. And, and there's plenty of pressure in the postseason as it is. And now you have to make, you know, you have to make the quick throw and you have to make the extra throw against our base runners. You know, next thing you know, we're going to win four to three and, and then we're out of there. I got a quick question. How how has the how has the crowds been at the stadium so far? Has it you guys been packing the house? Because I know personally, I know the Marlins most likely are not packing the house. The Cincinnati Reds most likely are not. And how have the crowds and in, in, in the environment been for you guys? I'd be lying if I didn't say I was a little disappointed that we didn't Ooh. have better crowds. Um, this is you know this is a playoff environment. We you know we just played the Cubs for three games. At home, they're a playoff team. We're a playoff team. We're fighting. Uh, then we play the Giants, and you know, I know school comes back, and you know, I'm not saying about you know a Wednesday day game when school is in. I'm not, you know, that's not. I'm not trying to judge based off of that. But I, you know, I would have liked to have seen a little more Snakes fans when the Cubs came to town. It kind of felt, you know, 50-50 Cubs fans, D-backs fans, and I know the Cubs have a great fan base, and, and I'm not arguing against that. But um, you know. I, I, I've been excited to be here in Arizona, but I would love I would love Diamondbacks fans to really show out when we come home and we play the Astros in the last week of the season with a chance to uh, with a chance to make some noise and go to the postseason. So, a little bit disappointed, and I understand we haven't, you know, you have to earn the right for fans to come. But I I, I would really love to see the place packed. Nice. Well, I got a quick statement, fans. If your team has the opportunity to make it to the playoffs, let's go. Let's show up. Let's go support your team. Come on, let's go to the playoffs. Playoffs and there's there's not there's no Arizona Cardinals games to watch. You know they stink. So like, come out and watch a team that's actually <laughs> fighting for the postseason. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, we this is a team that's got a chance. And and like I said, you know, you have no idea. Once you're in, anything can happen. So you know, the energy. I would love for the energy to be electric when we get back to uh, Chase Field next week and um, with a chance to really co- clinch a postseason berth for the first time since 2017. The Cardinals are tanking. Our Arizona Cardinals. I mean, they. I think they're. They look- they're, they're very the much Williams. in the Caleb Williams sweeps stakes more than maybe any other team, at least heading into the season. We'll see how it plays out, but it's a good call. The other thing I will say, this is not 
in defense at all. But when you do get those splits with the Cubs, so many fans in the Midwest end up transplanting and living down there full time, retiring down there to get the you know older crowd that ends up living down there, having the time, hitting a game. I mean, not a total comparison here either, but in Miami, New York, and other Northeast cities do really well compared to the home crowd for teams because I, I would see it when I lived down there. So not an excuse, but for the Cubs series, okay. For anything else, you guys should be dominating down there. Yeah, and totally, totally understandable. You know, you're going against the Yankees, Red Sox, Cubs, you know, fan bases. That's, you, you know, they're going to have, they're going to have people on the road. Doesn't matter. Um, but we're going to go against the Astros next weekend. And um, I've had plenty of feuds with the Astros. So everyone knows how I feel about them. I would love to make sure that fans are out there, out there cheering for the Diamondbacks next weekend. <laughs> love that. Exactly. Right. You can Google all that. Um, all right. So a question for you on sleep, big topic this week. Did you see the comments? Everyone saw it. It's actually awesome. I'm always curious. Sometimes we bring up a story and most of the players are learning about it from us. It sounds like almost every player caught this this week. The Yusei Kikuchi, com Kikuchi comments about 13 to 14 hours. Then he clarifies that it's only before start. And I honestly, like some people were like, oh, he was kidding. I don't know Yusei Kikuchi. I've never interviewed him before. But just going off the belief that at least the, the day before starts, he's putting in 14 hours. Your thoughts and your average sleep time. As a former teammate of Yusei's, he was not, I'm sure he wasn't kidding. I absolutely think that was something that he has to have before he goes out for starts. You know, we kind of talked about it, me and a couple other people from Seattle. I'm like, he has a kid. I don't know how you end up with 11 hours of sleep anyways. Like the rest of us that have kids never get 11 hours of sleep. So I don't know how that's like the bare minimum and that like that would throw you off your game. If I ever got 11 hours of sleep, I would feel over the moon, whether I'm starting relief, like, that just doesn't happen when you have a kid. I don't understand. I, I don't understand his sleep schedule. That's maybe, that's incredible. Maybe the rest of you are doing it wrong, though, Paul. Like maybe Kikuchi's like, "Yo, I got two nannies, two au pairs, whatever it is. When I wake up and want to hang out with the kids, I do that. But before that, someone else handles morning duty." Literally. Well, I enjoy hanging out with my daughter, so I wake up and play with her. I don't know. What, <laughs> I don't know what that scoop would be like. I, you know, I. Whatever. I, that, that's insane. That's insane. We kind of joked about it. You know, obviously Merrill Kelly has had his issues with, with cramps and he does literally everything science proven, have to drink water at this time, have to have this pickle juice, have to have this hydration pack and he's getting them. And, and then we were just joking that it's like, oh, all you need is 13 to 14 hours of sleep and then you need to be fine. And, you know, he has a young daughter and he knows that that's not going to be applicable to his life either. So he got another one on the way. Are you prepared? And most people go, okay, you're no. going from zone to man to man. You're not going from zone right now. You're going double coverage, locking her down <laughs> to you're going to have to play a single man zone because your wife is going to go, look, you take, you take both of them. I'm out. And you're going to be like, what do I do? There's so much estrogen everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, coming from a family with a brother that was very sports oriented, um, just having a girl in my life in the first place was, was a lot. And now we're going to have two. Uh, the Seawolf house is going to be pink. I just have, I've come to, uh, I've come to understand that and, and just accepted it. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the estrogen and the, and the attitudes are going to be an adjustment here for, for dad life, but I can't wait. You know, I feel like I've gotten the hang of girl life now. And, you know, I feel like it's like, all right, we'll just, we'll just keep it on. I, I don't mind that at all. It's good where I can be, boy and baseball stuff here at the field and then just, you know, pink and fully dad at home. Are you going to teach your, either one of your daughters to throw a slider? Like either one of them? We, we throw balls in the house. We throw balls in the house. We have a, you know, she's in this like throwing phase. And so we're like, no, no, no. You throw balls, not toys, throw balls, not food. And now she, she doesn't really understand, but she'll just say that she's like balls, not toys. And it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Only you're only allowed to throw balls. Um, and so we, you know, we have some plastic balls here at the house we have in Arizona that, that, uh, she can, you know, go around and chuck them and, you know, she gets maybe like two feet away and you kind of like have to make sure that like, you don't know if she's going to throw it like 30 miles an hour or, or throw it backwards. So, um, we're getting the hang of it. We're trying to get, we're trying to get some release point stuff down before we hit the slider. Okay. Bobby Miller. So she's kind of like Bobby Miller. She'll, <laughs> she's, does she apologize when she hits you in the face? 
no apologies. She just goes right at it. She's she's too tough for that. She's got Stone she's cold. got that presence on the mound. That's good. That's good. I like that. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go real quick. I got a quick question. I'm big on I'm big on the sleep thing. So I agree with him 100 percent on the sleep. What I would do, I would sleep all day, wake up, eat breakfast at nine ish, and then go right back to sleep. So I'm, I completely understand that was my stuff before I had kids. That is, you know, yes. now I got three boys. But um, three kids in Kansas City, they had a it had a sleep chamber. It had like a sleep room. Do you guys have anything like that in uh, Arizona? Yeah, so we have we have a gigantic room that's as, as big as our training room that has like everything recovery you could possibly ask for. So they have like two ridiculously nice uh, massage chairs that can like fully recline. So you can get the massage and you can kind of like tune it out. They have uh, a red light therapy machine they can give you recovery. They got the two uh, the hot tub, the cold tub, uh, the float tank, and then they have they have like four or five um, like lounge chairs that you can kind of like you can get reclined maybe like 45 degrees and stuff. And, you know, you've got to cover to make sure that it's dark and make sure that it, it's, uh, it's good. So we got, we have plenty of opportunities that we can get, we can get plenty of rest, you know, at home, especially when you take batting practice first and you have maybe two hours before game time, it's a, it's a really good opportunity to make sure you just get, you know, quick little nap, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever you need. So, um, yeah, they give us everything that we need to make sure that we get plenty of sleep and plenty of recovery here. Doing so, it right. Doing it right. Paul, this is it. This is the last regular season. Paul Seawald popping up on FT Live. We'll get you during the postseason. Will you be the same person, or should we prepare ourselves for a different Paul? You know how most players are in the playoffs. I mean, I, I always had to interview a billion of them, and I'm like, hello? <laughs> are you there? I think – I would like to say that I'm going to be the same one. I think um, – you know, I likened my first playoff experience to a debut situation where – some people it starts to, you know, it starts to spin a little bit quick. You just, and that's, that's not a testament to your mental fortitude or anything. It's just is something you've been working for your whole life. And then you finally get that debut. And some people are really able to lock it in as quickly as they can and, and go for it. And some people struggle. And I feel like the playoff situation is a little bit like that. And, and, you know, obviously my outings got a little bit better and a little more calm as, uh, as the postseason went last year. And, and I'm hoping that this year um, I can kind of make it, you know, a regular game and, and not get overly excited and, um, let my emotions get the hold of me. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be the same regular season policy all both for the podcast and both for the for for the uh, for the games that we have. I love that. And yeah, if if not, like if you're feeling it a little, and then you come on. We'll remind you, and we'll just we'll just chill. Like this will be the there escape we go. where there you're go. like, just a, eh, nothing nice matters. Quick in. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. You just get to make fun of other big leaguers. That's what the show's for. So exactly. Well, get get in that playoff race or get in the postseason in general first. So go grab a spot. And then we'll talk to you in October. That sounds perfect. I love that. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Paul. Good luck, man. Big, big Appreciate week it. and a half coming up for AZ and that playoff race for the National League wildcard spots. It is wild. 